Hello everybody, welcome back. 6.37 p.m. November 15th, 2017. Alright, this video we're going to talk about this lower area here of the Caribbean. Uh, I've been getting a lot of questions about it. We are still seeing, at least on the CMC, that there is a system expected to form here and then kind of bounce around in this area. Now, the, the reason we don't have much detail as far as if this thing is going to form or where it's going to go, it's because they just don't have that amount of data out yet. I know when you look at this chart, our wide radar chart we've been using a lot. I know we haven't posted in about ooh, two days, unfortunately, but we are here now. Uh, this thing does look like a giant mess, and you can see it's almost like a front. There's a front pushing down from the jet stream. This was uh, almost basically pulled down all the way from Canada, but if you can imagine the jet stream loop coming down all the way through the Gulf here and then moving up this way, that's why it looks like such a distinct line here. But uh, this is also uh, being caused by warm water. Uh, surface water though we're not going deep into the ocean and I'm going to show you a couple charts here that back that up and now if you watch our mimic chart here we watch this a lot during the peak of hurricane season to watch our uh, westward belt here like a warm water belt these were the storms that were coming off of uh, w uh, the west coast of Africa they were being pushed this way and they would roll all the way up through the lesser Antilles and then uh, Puerto Rico uh, Dominican Republic, so on and so forth. Now, if you notice towards the end here, you see how this surface water here, it begins to peak up into this area. Now, that's sort of matching. We'll get back to the radar chart. Here we go. If you notice this line here, you can kind of match it up to the mimic chart when it gets up into this area. Now, this would be surface water. Now, in very rare, rare circumstances, uh, the surface water is what hurricanes or tropical storms will uh, feed off of to continue to strengthen or to form in general. Now, if you notice down here, we have very uh, warm water. This is still an area that we are watching uh, based on a few things. Now, I'm balancing back and forth here to these charts because I want you to see how they relate to each other. You can see these big storms here. These are puffing up, um, and more than likely, they're dying out just as quickly because we're dealing with an area that's not as consistent with warm water. The Gulf, for the most part, is cooling down. Um, there's not a lot of fuel as far as storms will go, so for the people asking about this, the reason that you're seeing this on the CMC, and we're going to show this now, is because that is the only place we really have this water. Now, I want you to imagine something. If you can imagine on this chart, just like we were showing on the Mimic, uh, this wall comes up into this area, and you can see it kind of pulling up um, into the middle of the Atlantic it looks like. Now again, this is just surface water, so it's going to come and go very quickly, but in very, very rare circumstances, these storms can form, and they can not so much follow where the warm water is, but other surrounding pressures like highs and lows. We have our, our Bermuda Atlantic here. If for some reason the pressures were in the right place to push this thing along warm water, it could continue the life cycle of the storm. But it looks to me that even if this thing does form down here, and becomes a significant storm, it doesn't look like it's going to follow that warm water path. And by the time it does get uh, past Jamaica and Cuba and then up towards the Bahamas, chances are this warm water that was up in this area is not going to be there. So I'm going to go out. I'm going to tell you guys right now, I don't think that even if this storm forms, it's really going to be an issue as far as the United States goes. Now, if you notice, the date here is the 23rd. Right now we're on the 15th, so I'll back it up to the 15th. And that's about right here. So, we have a system like we just showed on the Mimic and the radar chart that is pushed up in this way. You can kind of see these lines here. It sort of follows that area. It's a, I wish I had a, a more than one screen pulled up here at the same time. I might start working on that actually for future videos. But as we move forward, you can see this area that just kicks into this low here is that spot. So, you can picture the warm water being pulled up into this area. That is this right here. You can see it's almost like a shark fin. I'll let it play through one more time. And you can see it right here. So now this is the system. Now if you look in this area here, that's what's pulling off of that. So we have this system. We'll back it up to the 15th. And you can see how this kind of looks like that shark fin shape we were just looking at. That's also the low pressure lines here. So there's a system that just came off the northeast that's passing by. And then as we move forward, you can see it breaks into three pieces. One, two, and then the third one's down here. So again, by the time this storm that they're, uh, the CMC is calling to form later on in the week, right here is when we start getting the, the visuals of it on the 20th. 
which is in five days, chances are that that warm water that's being pulled up into the middle of the Atlantic is going to be a non-issue for this storm. And again, not only that, but then this storm would have to have the influencing pressures around it to ride that. And if even if it does, guys, it's looking like it's going to stay in the middle of the Atlantic. So, for those of you asking about this system, even though it is showing on the CMCs, it, look how it's doing just like loop-de-loops. It's almost just sitting in the warm water, not really knowing where to go, and there's no real pressures influencing it. You can see the dip comes down here, and it kind of skims over top, and that's actually forcing it back down. That's why you're seeing it do a bit of a loop-de-loop. -loop. It comes back down like that, and then right here is the end of the data. So it does look like towards the end of these frames here, that after it forms right there, it goes north, west, south, and then east a little bit and then begins to come up north again but it looks like that angle is bringing it right up in this area but again we don't know that for sure we don't know exactly where it's going to go from here we have to make sure that the pressures that are around this thing um, actually stay this way we all know this stuff can change uh, that's really what steers these storms so I am going to continue to watch this area I've been trying to focus on a lot of the cooler weather that's going on in the northeast and we do have some stuff going on um, on the west coast of the country, if I have a pull up, here we go. These are uh, wind chill alerts and uh, more, more likely winter weather. These are going on in the higher elevations. There's some issues going on in northern California. I'm making a separate video for this, so I wanted to just focus on this video to point out this spot that a lot of people were pointing out to me. Now again, it looks like on this mimic chart that this is a lot of warm water going on. We always have that a western warm water belt going on. The thing is, is that the atmospheric conditions that are higher up above this, they're not favorable for storms this time of year. And that's why as we get closer to November 30th, that's that so-called date of the end of the season. Now, we've talked about this a few times. We've had, uh, since 2003, we haven't had a single storm or a tropical storm form in the month of April, but we did this year. So, it doesn't mean that we're going to have late, late, late uh, tropical storms it means that it's just very possible and with the season that we've had so far I would not be surprised to see it happen so that's why I'm still watching this very closely that's why when people see these things now I'm getting emails and messages and stuff like hey check out the South Caribbean and that's true I'm glad people are talking to me about this because it shows me that people are at least learning a little bit about these storms now again my main concern with storms is not where they decide to go because that's not how it works these storms are influenced by other pressures. If there was no um, pressure influences or moving jet streams, these storms would form and sit still and die out right where they formed. So we need those other things to uh, steer them in different directions so they don't automatically follow warm water like they're attracted to it. They do use it as fuel, but the only way for that this storm would be able to ride that warm water is if it's pushed by other things to be in that warm water, if that makes sense. And here on our water vapor chart, you can also see that distinct line that we're talking about uh, in the beginning of the video. Uh, this, again, just came from west to east over the U.S. And before I leave this chart, you can see this high pole right here. This is kind of aiding in some of those cool temperatures in northern California. That's why we showed that, um, that severe weather chart. Uh, for the situation in Northern California and again I'm gonna put that in another video separate from this one but also for the Northeast there's gonna be some rain going on uh, probably overnight tonight it looks like I know I got some uh, rain coming I don't know if it's gonna be uh, as far as overnight tonight or in the early hours of tomorrow morning regardless it's gonna mess up my work day I know that much but you can see right here it's like uh, it's a deep it's a or not deep it's a it's a high U and then it dips down just below the the Great Lakes right here so it is moving its way pretty quickly and it's starting to swirl in a counterclockwise motion so that's what brings it can bring up warmer air if it has enough influence and and keep it a warmer storm or it could do the exact opposite as it's curling down you can see this area is being pulled down so if that happens over the US that's what pulls that cool air down into the into uh, the north US or the northeast rather so there's a few situations that can go on it depends on where uh, the the turn is going on as it's passing over a certain state if that makes sense to you guys so it can do one of two things because we have the warm water that's being pulled up from the Caribbean into the middle of the Atlantic it doesn't so much mean it's a dip in the jet stream that pulls down that cool air it may not be a snowmaker I don't think it's gonna be from what I saw but again it is moving quickly it's gonna come and go really quick but again the main point of this video was to show you the situation going on in the South Caribbean we do have a lot of action going on there is a lot of activity going on 
uh, as far as, oh, where did I put it? Or, there we go. Okay, so you guys can see it with your own eyes. Here, you can see there are severe storms blowing up in this area. They just don't have enough around them as far as warm water to keep them going. And I brought up this chart for you to show you the warm water. We'll zoom in a little more here. But you can see these areas are getting less and less. If you remember earlier in the season, this whole area was just red. It was red, 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 red. Even the gulf was red. But now we have these deep blues coming in. That's the cooler water. That is why they put the end of hurricane season around this time in November. We still have a couple weeks to go before the official end of it. But that's why we watch this, guys. So for those of you still concerned about that storm, I don't see it be a, uh, being a big issue for the U.S. Of course, anything can happen. We know how this works. But I just wanted to jump on here and uh, clear the air for some of you in that case uh, Like I said, I'm making another video as far as the Northern California stuff goes And I'm doing a couple other things for around the globe Some other storms going on that people were asking me about So I haven't gone anywhere, I'm still very much here I'm still very much watching all these charts I will be posting more often I know it's been a couple days since I made a video I, I'm tired of uh, you guys having to hear the same thing over and over again, but it's just, it is what it is, guys. It's life. I'm, I'm trying to get this done as much as I'm trying to get my own life done, but I love doing this stuff. I will be doing this all winter long. There's no question about it. Uh, there's no way this channel is going anywhere. I can promise you that. So that's where we are for now. We still got some consistent reds going on near Jamaica. Um, in the Caribbean, guys, the Caribbean's a warm place. It's going to stay warm, but I just don't see this storm that we're looking at, this one down here. I don't think it's going to be an issue for the U.S. I'm sure a lot of you agree with me that have been following this, and that's just where we're at. We're going to keep an eye on it, and while this is going on, we got to keep an eye on the northeast. Uh, it is that time of year, guys. We may get some of those severe snowstorms coming soon, and we'll be covering those just as close. All right, guys, I hope you have a great night. I'm going to do my best to get another video here in the morning. If not, tomorrow afternoon 100%. All right, have a great night, guys. Talk to you soon.